Welcome back. Unfortunately, our streets have people who would without thinking do a law enforcement officer harm, let alone an innocent citizen. That's why instructors at the Criminal Justice Institute drill home a tough message with physical training and defensive tactics. It is constant. Physical training and defensive tactics are a part of training every single day at the academy. It is intense. It is difficult. And to be safe on the streets, it's worth every minute of the pain. The very first day in the academy, they're doing physical training. The very last day in the academy, they're doing physical training. An hour to two a day. And it's outside, it's in the heat, it's in the sun. And, and we work them really hard. But being on the streets of Orange County is very difficult. And if they're not prepared for that, then we failed. And we don't like to fail. In fact, failure isn't an option, especially when it comes to physical training and defensive tactics. Classroom knowledge is important, but instructors know deputies must learn how to defend themselves. And that learning comes at the hands of dozens of tactical expert instructors who watch every strike, every kick, every technique. They all must be perfect and pass through the tough scrutiny of the head of the physical training and defensive department, George Steves. We try to find that fire that's burning them to want to be a law enforcement or corrections officer inside them and try to, try to get them to realize that that has to be nurtured and teamwork. The physical endeavors you can avoid a fight if you are in the proper tactical mindset, in the proper tactical place, all that, um, all the tactics that we teach are supposed to be after what we did didn't work. We want to give you the idea that you can survive, that you can push your body beyond the limits that you actually know about. Uh, a lot of people come here with not a lot of background in, say, the military or life experience that we try to make them say, I will survive. I can follow through with my, my mission, uh, take the person into uh, in the custody, protect the, pu protect the public, or do whatever has to be done to get the job done, and do so in a, in a somewhat controlled manner, but effectively do their job and survive and take care of business. But even in the best of shape, this routine would be hard to keep up with. That's why recruits must know what they are capable of doing physically and how their body should react in all situations, and that takes practice. Before I actually start uh, any of the defensive tactics programs, I take them through a week of uh, uh, muscle memory, teaching them how to squat, teach them how to fall down, teach them how to do push-ups, getting their upper body ready for the physical endeavors that are required by the defensive tactics program. Today in society, whether it's in a law enforcement capacity or corrections capacity, we're, we're, we got our hands uh, full. We have a very violent society at this point. We have to use force more than ever, and we want our recruits to be ready for that, both physically and mentally. That's why we put them through 20 weeks of physical training in the law enforcement academy, and we put them through two hours of physical training and defensive tactics on the mat almost every day. They got to be ready to protect society, and that's what we want them to do when they leave here. They're trying to instill the not quit. To, you know, you don't know how long the fight's going to last, and to keep going and work through it. There's a lot of punching, a lot of, a lot of drills, a lot of everything. It's really tough. We try to make it as tough as we possibly can, but we do not step above. Uh, the minimum standard. We hope they will continue their training. We hope that we've, we've nurtured that uh, need inside them to seek out further training, to keep themselves in better shape, to, to be professionals. Our main job here is we want these people to be professionals. Our main job here is to get that warrior mindset. This, this, is, this is a calling, not a uh, job. And what we try to do is bring those people who actually understand and get that to continue their training, continue to advance. To, nobody wants them to operate at a minimum standard, but we have to have a base level to start everybody else at. So we're, we're hoping they will further their, their education and go on and get some advanced training. And the hard work pays off in great dividends. The mindset of the student begins to reflect the communicative teamwork needed to survive on the street. It's more than just an education, it's about survival. When you leave the Criminal Justice Institute, it's not like passing 
a law class, or it's not like passing a humanities or an English class. We're talking about you passing a curriculum and a state approved curriculum that allows you to be out there on the streets and whatever you learn and take with you, you could be saving someone's life. You could save your partner's life. And we say that it's not something you may get a chance to remediate or take again. So we're saying this is actually hands on as best as we possibly can get it, real life is what you're gonna see and what you're gonna get. So that's why we're so tough and we, uh, we're very proud of how tough we are, but we're also very proud of what we, what we contribute to the community. Directors at the Academy hope that contribution is a fit officer who can handle him or herself and truly be an asset to the community. Because if a law enforcement officer can't protect him or herself, how will they be able to protect the community at large? The physical component of the Academy is drilled into the heads of the recruits. The drills here are unexpected. You have to have the endurance, you have to have the speed, you have to vocalize. And uh, as a female, it's just you have to prove yourself and be able to keep up with all the guys here. So it's definitely a challenge. The hardest thing for me was actually getting reacclimatized. I came out here two weeks uh, before the class started from California. So we're PTing at three in the afternoon initially. Humidity killed me. Um, the speed drills that we do on the, on the bags, punching 30 seconds, 45 seconds, jumping the obstacles, hitting the other bags, those, uh, they, they're physically tiring. Um, you have to actually work up to them. There's very few people that can walk in and do that off the top of their, off the top of their head with stamina. And it's all designed because you don't know how long you're going to be in a fight, a one-on-one -on -one confrontation, and you have to fight till it's over or your backup arrives. That's the whole purpose behind this drill. Most. Working on the most is probably, you know, just breathing, keeping breathing control during the, uh, the punching drills. There's a lot of intense, if you don't breathe, you, you know, it's going to be a lot harder, a lot strenuous. But the runs are also tough. We started like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and the heat is, it's pretty tough. These recruits do the same drills over and over again and again to gain muscle memory. So when the time comes to react, there will be no hesitation. We turn turn on and turn off the violence as needed. The violent predators that are preying on these people versus us, we call it the sheepdog and wolf mentality. We are the sheepdogs, they are the wolves. The sheepdog doesn't use violence unless it has to, so. Recruits are encouraged to give it their all physically, but are not to injure their partner. Sometimes it's more easier said than done. It's gonna take the act of getting knocked out really hard. It gets intense. Uh, they tell you not to be competitive, that's hard. It's, it's really hard not to be competitive because you want to come out on top, you want to win. But you have to do everything um, technically sound. You have to learn how to do it, which means you have to do it slowly. And then you continually work on it to perfect it. Um, the drill they're doing behind us, we've been working on this type takedown since yesterday. And we worked on it all day yesterday and we're still lousy at it. But uh, you know, as you can see by the critiquing, some people are getting the hand position right. If you don't get the hand position right, you haven't done anything right. So it's important to maintain control. That's the hardest thing that they have to get through people. Follow through with all the steps and every little thing they teach you. We have had some incredible instructors out here, very entertaining, and um, most of it is the experience that they bring and the stories that they bring from what they've faced out on the road um, gives us a lot of knowledge, um, a lot more than any book can. And that's what the instructors are there for, to help recruits perform at peak capacity. It's something they are very good at. Well, in this region, we have the best instructors, I believe, in this state. Valencia is one of the top training centers in the state, so we recruit the best instructors. They, are, they have knowledge, high, a high level of knowledge, a high level of expertise, and they're very, very committed. They're committed to the recruits that are coming in and leaving this academy. And it really, the recruit takes the instructor's legacy with them. We hammer and hammer that into them every day and don't quit. We try to take them to the to their quitting point and then just a step further so that they get stress inoculation and, and all sorts of other buzzwords that the experts in the country use. Um, those experts are right and uh, I'm very well acquainted with most of them and we try to bring that here to Valencia as, as uh, best we can. They'll come back and say, you know what, Valencia is so good because now that I am out doing a job, working for particular agencies, we receive the best possible training bar none. And that's why I'm pleased about it. We do scenario-based training, but we also teach them that they can push themselves beyond what they thought they were capable of and survive. 
and, and be successful. And the thing is, if they don't learn to fight through whatever adversity they have here, they're not going to carry that out on the street and fight through the adversity when they're on the ground fighting a bad guy, they're in a shootout, whatever the case may be. Um, they have to be, we have to prepare them for that in live scenarios is, or actual training and scenario based training as close as we can to the real thing. So we have to put them under stress physically and emotionally. I can tell you having been here going on five years, the best reward I've had is two recruits that have been in shootings have come back and thanked me after their officer involved shooting situations and said, you know, I could hear you tell me, I'm gonna get through this, I'm gonna survive this, I'm gonna do the right thing. And, and that's why we do what we do. The Criminal Justice Institute at Valencia Community College, providing the Orange County Sheriff's Office with the best of the best. And no one knows that more than under Sheriff Ray Rivero. Thank you, Jeff. It's not easy to become an Orange County Deputy Sheriff. Our requirements are tough and we hire top quality candidates. The Criminal Justice Institute does a great job in training our deputy trainees uh, to serve the citizens of Orange County, Florida. We appreciate the hard work that they do and are looking forward to another class of well-trained Orange County trainees coming out real soon. Thank you, Under Sheriff. And now, a special feature, one of our own detectives, Michael Seagraves, serving his country with honor. His story seen around the world on CNN. And now heroes, Sergeant First Class Michael Seagraves has honorably served in the Army for two decades, and this week he deploys to Afghanistan. Philippa Holland has his story. Want me to climb up in there? Sergeant First Class Michael Seagraves saw a lot of enemy action escorting Army convoys in Iraq in 2004. Combat duty began with his very first assignment, protecting a 30-truck convoy of supplies traveling from Kuwait. I noticed there was a lot of uh, black smoke in front of us things that were burning. We started receiving small arms fire and RPG fire and improvised explosive devices also began going off. Um, I realized that we were entering into an ambush. Um, we fought our way through the ambush, returning fire, but at the same time I had lost communications with my rear security element. He feared they had been hurt or killed. I knew I had to get back to them to check on their status, so I started making my way to the rear of the security formation that we had formed on the roadway uh, while under fire. I managed to get back there um, by the grace of God. After making sure they were safe, Sergeant Seagraves called an air support to stop the attack. All his soldiers survived. Nine insurgents were killed. For his courageous and honorable actions, the Army awarded Seagraves the Bronze Star with Valor in January. Now he's off to Afghanistan as one of 17,000 additional troops recently ordered by President Obama. His team will make sure the incoming troops have everything they need, from equipment to ammunition to travel plans, to accomplish their critical mission. Reserve units aren't usually charged with this task. The Army has enough trust and confidence in us to go in, in there as a command and oversee logistics for the entire theater of Afghanistan. That in and of itself is making history. A 20-year Army veteran, Seagrave says he has plenty of reasons to serve. Everything motivates me to fight for this country, my family, um, the fact that, you know, you can vote for who you want to vote for in this country um, without any reprisals. It's an awesome country. I've been around to a lot of different places in the world, and I can tell you that there's no place like the United States of America, and I'll defend it any day. Philippa Holland, CNN. Sergeant Seagraves plans to retire from the Army after this deployment, and we wish him a safe return. One of our very best, Detective Michael Seagraves, serving his country with honor. Our thanks to Lou Dobbs tonight and CNN for allowing us to air that segment. That's all the time that we have for now. Thanks so much for being with us and for allowing us the opportunity to serve and protect you.